I'm doing the adult programming here at the library. Let me start out saying I apologize for the heat. It's probably one of the hottest days of the year, and we have no air conditioning vents in here, but I just have a fan. Um, we have Bryce, Ashley, and Becky from Mississippi Valley for Paranormal Group. They're here to discuss their basic their ghost hunting adventures. Um, I'm going to let them start out, tell you a little bit about their background, and go from there. Um, it's going to be about half an hour, 45 minutes, and then they'll take questions and give me Thank you. Thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, my name is Bryce, as she said. Uh, I'm the, one of the co-founders of Mississippi Valley Paranormal. Uh, Becky here is my co-founder. Uh, we've been with the group since the beginning. We uh, founded in 2007. Um, and this is uh, Ashley. She's a new member of the group. So I just again want to thank you all for coming and hopefully we scare you out of your shorts tonight. <laughs> so a little bit about us. Um, like I said, we were founded in 2007. Um, myself, I've been involved with the paranormal for about 16 years. Um, started when I was a teenager doing parade yards and all that fun stuff back in the day. Um, Becky was, I don't know how long you've been doing Well, before. just a couple of years beyond or before this, went on some private investigations. Yeah. Um, and then Ashley has been in, in, intrigued with it all her life, but you know, she almost recently started investigating with us. Um, um, say so our, our members, we all come from all walks of life. We're not all just like crazy blood living in the basements. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm from retail. She does retail. She's a stay-at-home grandmother. Um, so we have one that's a nurse. You know, just from all over, all kinds of people there. Um, we have over our 10-year history, we have investigated over 50 homes in the Clinton and Quad City area, and then of course the outside of the community there. Um, we've also done several businesses that I cannot name because they don't want their reputations tarnished or nothing. Um, but several bowling alleys, a daycare, we've done several different businesses. Um, for our investigations, we do not charge for anything we do. We strictly rely on donations <coughs> and money we provide ourselves for our equipment, our travel needs, all that. Process. So like all of our equipment that is up here are things we purchased ourselves and purchased with um, funds from our group, like from dues. Um, so, Talking about gear, we're going to kind of introduce that. Um, we use a variety of equipment that necessarily wasn't designed for ghost hunting, um, but unfortunately, you have to look at what you got. Um, big one, voice recorders. Um, I don't know if heard of EVDs, electronic voice phenomena. What that is, it, it, what that is, is basically sounds that you don't hear but are recorded on electronic devices. That's a that's a high end fancy one. It's got five microphones built into it. So, and it records 360 degree sound. So that one is a very fancy one that we have caught a lot of good stuff with. And the reason we use these voice recorders is a lot of these places we go into, um, we will capture sounds on those recorders or voices that we don't hear with our, with our ear. So it's a real good tool. It's one that I think just about every member of the group has. Our next one is called the electromagnetic field detectors, or EMF for short. Basically what they do is they detect electronic fields. Yeah, well, that's what's wrong. There's several different kinds of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, if you watch the ghost signing shows, I'm sure you know the K2 meter. We got one of those. Um, we got a couple just regular EMF detectors. The theory is that when ghosts manifest themselves, they give off an electrical field. And these devices detect that field and can help us point us in the direction of where we may need to concentrate our our uh, activities. Yeah. You know, like this one here, we, we can go around and we can, we can use it in a couple different ways. One of the ways we use it is to communicate. So say we're doing some question and answers with the um, digital recorder. We can ask, you know, can you make this light up? Is your present? Yes. Light up once, two, for no. And we, believe it or not, we've had responses like that. Otherwise, we can just see if there's anything in the area. Sometimes it just shows us that the wiring is bad, too, in the house. So. Yeah, now that's one big thing. Is a lot of times, that will detect if you have that grounding on your wiring or whatnot. So. Um, another one we use is called infrared thermometer. And basically, another theory is that when ghosts try to manifest, they draw the energy from the environment around them, and that will make the temperature lower. And we just use that to you know, scan the environment and see if there's any temperature fluctuations. And it's a non-contact thermometer. Um, it, there's a laser pointer on it, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's where it's measuring it, just in the air in front of it. Then we use night vision cameras, which, as the name of this, 
one of them. As the name implies, it sees in total darkness. Uh, that one right there. Um, when we investigate, we have the lights completely off, um, and that helps us to, of course, see and document anything that might happen. We also use a motion sensor. Uh, basically, it's just a, you buy it for your house to guard your door, it just it detects motion and the light turns off. Um, we have had luck with that sometimes where empty hallway and it'll just randomly go off. Uh, we have a, a track camera, which I don't know if any of you know what that is. It's basically a game camera you can use to use hang up on your tree to capture deer or whatnot. Um, we, we, we've had success with that too. Um, detects motion, takes a picture or a video. Uh, of course, the gold digital cameras that you, you know, those are also uh, the use a lot of take pictures of the rooms and stuff. A lot of people talk about orbs that they capture in their photos. We don't believe in orbs because you know, more likely than not, it's just dust or bugs. Um, if you can, and we, we've had seen before where you see an orb with your eyes, with your actual eyes, then you know that's a little bit more, you know, previous to that. But otherwise, if we capture orbs in photos, we, it's inadmissible to us. And of course, the all important flashlight. Because you know nothing's more important than a flashlight when it's completely dark out. Which I have a bunch of mini ones if anybody wants one when we're done. Yeah, so yeah, we brought a bunch in case y'all want someone to go on your own those adventures. More about this crazy flashlight. Yep, I'm in there. Oh, okay. Next page, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now we we go to the more advanced gear that not necessarily uh, all the groups have that we have access to. Um, the electromagnetic pump. Uh, we have one displayed right here. Basically what that is, is it's a small power generator. It generates one electromagnetic field to help draw out spirits to it. Uh, we, we sometimes use them, sometimes don't. Um, it just depends on where we're investigating at. If it's a big building with a lot of reported activity, then we'll pull those out and try using them. See if that increases activity. Uh, another one we have right here, it's called a parabolic microphone. It's just a little toy one that was on Amazon like 10 bucks, but what it is is it collects the sound and amplifies it so you can hear like EVPs or just any sound or whatever, and it's very powerful. You can get a lot of feedback if you're not careful. Blow your, blow your ear out doing that. <laughs> uh, the spirit box, which unfortunately we don't have here right now. A lot of you probably see that like Ghost Adventures, whatever what it is. It is it scans the radio stations in reverse, about like one second interview and intervals. And the theory is that you can pick up you know, spirits talking to you that way. And they call it more authentic because the patients are standing backwards, so you can, you know, technically pick up, you know, senses that make sense. Uh, we have a uh, member says it's called a laser grid. It's basically a laser pointer, but it's been modified so it just shoots a grid on the wall. And that helps detect, like, movement, shadows. Um, I think we've had one or two investigations yeah. we've seen. Sometimes, like, if you see the, the pattern of the red lights or whatever color, and you can watch, and if something was to walk through and break that that pattern, you can see the the breakage between the lights would go off from there. And and can I ask one thing? Absolutely. Well, one thing you said was an electromagnetic pump. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you say it would actually draw it yes. to that? If possible, yes. Oh. What it what it generates its own electromagnetic field, which mm -hmm. the ghosts theoretically rely on to manifest themselves. So it's just like a little generator. So it generates the power for the ghosts, in theory. Yeah, and you know, all these things now that we use it all just based on theories and um, trying just whatever we can to try to make communication. Yeah, and a lot of these things we have had success with. Some, you know, not, but, you know, we're always trying, we're always trying new things to try to, you know, prove the presence of, you know, the paranormal. Um, our last one is the night out surveillance system. Basically, it's a four camera, system, night vision system that we can set up throughout the building and record this video um, for hours and hours. And we have a little monitor set up so we can just watch the cameras um, throughout the entire building. We, use, we definitely use this in the bigger buildings where we can't be all the time. Um, we're actually going to a, a, a band schoolhouse here next week uh, out by Des Moines uh, that has a lot of haunted activity. We've um, been there a couple of times before. Becky has actually seen yeah. an apparition there. I don't think we have the cameras in the way before, do no. we? So, I because mean, it is three floors. It's just three floors full so house, yeah. That camera system is really helpful for something like that. So, now, now I'm going to talk about how we actually uh, do our investigation process. 
Well, was there any questions at all about the equipment or what we use or? So we'll have time at the end to, of course, ask any questions if you want to come up and play the equipment also. We do volunteers to do Well, we require people to be 18 or older because we because of the liability. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, so you have to follow the form and all this other stuff. Yeah, but it, and we only allow it if it's a public place. Like, um, we don't allow guests on like, if it's like a private home or something like that. Um, so I'm going to talk about our investigation process. We follow strict guidelines, so everybody receives answers in a professional manner and scientific manner as well. Um, our first thing we can do is we interview the client. We have a packet of, um, we have a packet of a bunch of questions that will either conduct an interview in person or we'll talk to them over the phone so we can get an idea of like the stuff they're experiencing, if they know the history on the house, stuff like that. Um, then we will uh, actually tour the property with the homeowner, you know, they point out stuff and We'll kind of Google like pre-investigation scan uh, stuff with our equipment and whatnot. Um, then we'll set up the equipment in like hot spots, um, things like that. Um, so it'll make a game plan for the night. And then we go lights out. And a lot of people ask why you turn the lights off when you're investigating. Because you know a lot of people say yeah, it's in the daytime, not necessarily always at nighttime. And when it's completely dark, your senses actually get heightened. You're hearing, um, you're smelling, your sight, maybe not so much. Um, a lot of people say that um, the person is dark, you know, you hear a lot more. That's why we do that. And then we investigate. Um, we spend uh, at least four hours at every um, place we go to, um, to be fair to the client. Um, that does not include, you know, interview and setup time. Um, after the four hours and if like nothing's happening, then we'll call it, we'll break all the equipment down. And then we will um, talk with the client again, let them know that, you know, we're done and, you know, we'll be heading out and, um, we, uh, of course, we'll leave the premises. When we do investigations like this, if it's possible, we ask the homeowners or the client to leave right. that location simply because we want to make sure that any noises or voices or anything that we record are actual ones that are created by them. And most of them are real good about it. Uh, I somehow press the wrong button. So. Sorry about this. Alright, here we go. Almost there. Most of the investigations we've done in homes, those people have contacted us um, by our website or they've seen us on Facebook or something like that. And so it usually starts out with an email requesting an investigation and nine times out of ten when they contact us with, the, with an email, they'll be like, I just, I don't want anybody to think I'm nuts or <laughs> I don't think things I'm nuts and I hear this or that, you know. And so we just want that validation of what they're experiencing to see if we experience it also. So when we investigate, we, like I was talking before, the lights are off, we turn off any heating air conditioning to prevent noise and contamination. Oh. And we also uh, turn off all our cell phones or any sort of electronic devices we would have on us. I mentioned you've covered this, but do you assess the history of the property before you go? Yes, absolutely. Yes, we try to do that with every place we go to. A lot of, about half the time the homeowners already have done that for us. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's some properties we investigate that just no records whatsoever that we're able to access. Like we just recently did one in Comanche. They lived there for several years, but they had no no idea about the background. And we got to remember too that you know, especially like the area of Comanche, we had the tornado. We don't know what was on that land prior to that. And now there's maybe a nice new home there that they're experiencing stuff. So um, we try to find out what we can. Um, like I was mentioning before, we have a four-hour four minimum investigation time for every home, not including the setup time and all that. Um, and then when we're done, it, it takes roughly about two weeks for us to go through all the uh, evidence. It ain't like TV shows where they do it in like, you know, five minutes. For every minute you record, that's another minute you have to go back and review. So if we're there for five hours, that's five hours of time they have to go through and listen to audio, watch video. And Obviously, you have multiple recorders and videos, so we have to double or triple that time that it takes to go over the evidence. Um, and that's because, you know, we all have lives outside of investigating jobs and everything. So, 
we, we give a general <coughs> two-week window for our investigation uh, review. Um, we, have actually, we actually team up with uh, local groups um, to do some investigations. Um, one is uh, uh, Illua Elite Paranormal in Quad Cities. We've teamed with, uh, with them a couple of times, as well as All Out Paranormal. Uh, we're actually doing a, that schoolhouse with them here coming up the next week. Um, we believe in unity because there are a lot of groups in the Quad Cities nowadays. When we started, there was two or three. Right. And now there's 10 plus. So we try to work with other groups just so there's no fighting for you know, prop, you know, fighting for investigations and whatnot, because that doesn't help anybody. Well, a lot of times it just helps to, to get another person's perspective. One team, you know, or one group might investigate a different ways than we do, and so it's always good to have um, new ways to investigate. Uh, so we're going to talk about some fun facts about us uh, that you may not know. Um, we've actually investigated several locations that were featured on, on television shows. Um, Edinburgh Manor, which was featured on Ghost Adventures, we've been there three or four times. Uh, that was my first one. Yep, three or four times. Always get amazing stuff there. Um, uh, a place called Willow Creek Farm, which was featured on my ghost story, I believe. Yeah. We've been there once. Um, Calista Axe Manor House, we've been there twice. Mm -hmm. um, got some great evidence from there that we'll show up here in a little bit. Um, place we call George's house. Mm -hmm. Becky can laugh about this one. The house in Muscatine, we investigated the house seven times because the homeowner kept insisting that there was activity in this house. And yes, we did capture some stuff there. Uh, Becky can probably give you a little bit more information on that. Yeah, I mean, I guess one of the most profound things that happened when I was there one time, it was just myself, my brother, and another person that was a member of our group. And we were all in this bedroom and we were, you know, just doing the question and answer session. We had one of those cell sensors on the floor that would beep and light up. And so we were asking questions and all of a sudden it beeped and lit up. We heard footsteps and the person that was sitting on the floor, she actually felt the movement of the floor. Like, like you'd feel it if somebody was walking close to you. And so that was really alarming for her. But when we played it back, we did record the footsteps, but the room we were in was a carpeted room, and the footsteps we heard were like something walking on a wooden floor. So that was really neat, and we had, you know, several things that validated that something did happen there because of the the first the alarm going off on that to let us know that there was something in that area. The fact that she felt that um, movement on the floor, and the fact that we caught the footsteps too. So. And the house was actually split into a duplex. Like the lower floor was the apartment, and the upper floor was another apartment. And all the activity was happening on that upper floor. Yeah. Uh, I like to call this one the lost case. What was was the house in Rock Island that we've been to twice? Yeah. We've been to that house twice, and that house was probably one of the most active places we've ever investigated. It was right next to the Jewish Center in Rock Island. Um, we caught some crazy evidence in that house. Um, so much so that the family actually abandoned the house. Um, but the thing was that after they abandoned it, the bank took over and found out about our the investigations and our evidence posted on our website and actually threatened us with legal action if we didn't take that stuff off our website. And we don't post anything on the website until we get the homeowner's permission. We always have them review it, we get their permission, and then we put it on. Yeah, so we had the homeowner's permission, but then they abandoned the house and went back to the bank. So suddenly we didn't have permission and uh, threat of legal action. So. We call it the last case because there's no, you know, it's off on our website. We saw a lot of the evidence, which I'll show you here a little bit later, but that's an investigation that, you know, you're not going to see on our website. Anymore. And the homeowners, too, before they left, they said something about activity, contact, MVP, and they wrote it and tried to cover it or something like that. Well, then they thought, the bank thought we would have gone in and, no. like, did a graffiti or something. It was, it was crazy. Yeah, well, yeah. and that was. That was right after we started to like less than a year after we formed our group at this <laughs> online. So, um, well, our case was actually down and go. I've heard of the TV show called Dead Files. I think it was on Travel Channel. Maybe. Uh, one of our cases was actually featured on that uh, show. And one of our, two of our investigators uh, were actually interviewed by that show. Um, unfortunately, they didn't make the final cut, but they were featured in the deleted scenes on the Discover or Travel Channel website. We had a new party for that and everything. <laughs> and that house was in Rock Island as well. So. Yeah, it was. There seems to be a lot of homes in the Quad City area, Rock Island particularly, that have that too. And then I've 
Bob's house. I, I don't know if you ever go see Bob's house. Okay. Uh, Bob was a former investigator with us, and he had purchased a house, and there was just so much crazy activity there. I have a couple of events about later, but um, just voices, footsteps, walking, and it was just, like, I think we investigated his house like three times. I never did, unfortunately. Becky did once. But it's just crazy to think, you know, one of our members would have just such a haunted mm -hmm. location that they live in. All right, so I'm going to now play some of our uh, evidence for you. Um, fortunately, um, well, sounds going through the TV, so it might be a little quiet. It might be hard to hear. I brought a little sound system, and of course, it ended up not working. So, <laughs> so I will take that on the screen here. Um, so. Which one should we do first? Um, well, we'll start with something mild, and we'll go to the crazy stuff. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll just start with Doctor. Uh, this was an investigation we did here in Clinton. Uh, this is the ghost cat, we call it. She actually reported that there was several uh, instances that she thought there was a cat in the house when they were at, well, she had a, a, she had a cat in the house. She did have a cat, but it, she kept hearing like an actual, another cat walk around the house. And she she couldn't explain it. So I don't know if we really hear this or not. Let me check out. Uh, Yeah. 
A lot of these are going to be kind of low quality because some of our voice recorders don't record in the highest um, you know, quality. So we have amplifiers. Yeah, amplifiers. Yeah, 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 that does degrade quality too. So let me go back here. All um, right, so we're going to take a trip to Edinburgh now. Uh, I don't know if y'all have heard of Edinburgh Manor or not. Um, it, I, I don't it's in Scottsboro, Iowa. Yeah. It's up by Anamosa. Um, it used to be a poor farm back in the early 1900s. Um, and it eventually became a nursing home that closed in 2010, I believe it was. Um, so, and they've been just nothing but crazy activity they've recorded there uh, since it closed. There, We've been there three times. Yeah, three times. every single time, lots of activity. All right, so I'll start with the gentle one first. So this one was our was from our last trip there. Um, <laughs> let me pause here. Um, you'll just you know we're talking and I hear something because this is off this is off my personal record. I hear something that's just really strange and I I, I don't think it's in the record. I actually caught it. Up, did anyone hear that? And it's, it's just weird. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Just a, like a muffled woo 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 woo. Yeah. And you know you hear people talking. No one reacts to it at that time, but why would someone just be like, rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> <laughs> and people will go, what was that? I'll play it on the story. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is it's just one of those out there things. Uh, and that's when I have to be careful with. That's pretty startling too when we have headphones on. We're listening to that. And then we yeah. Get that yeah. All right. So <laughs> this one is a little bit more, I have to be careful with this one because there's some cussing for the end of this one, so be careful on that. We're, you know, we're all, we all have virgin ears here, so I got to be careful with that. So this one, uh, let me set this one up before I start playing it. Um, this is at Edinburgh Manor. There's no running bathroom in the building. There's a little house behind the building that has a bathroom. All it's the ladies- It's quite a bit away from the building. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a bit away from the building. All the ladies were in the bath, you know, in the house of the bathroom. So there's just myself and another male- Except me. What? I, I was in that house with you guys. Not when this happened. Yeah, that's what I got on the recorder too. Yeah, the, the recorder. Oh, the background. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, anyways, myself and another investigator, male, were in the building on the second floor setting up the equipment. Um, her, it was her recorder was sitting on the main floor, um, like right by the entrance. So, there's no one else in the building, so me and another male were up on the top floor setting up the equipment. So, let me put this one here. You'll be able to obviously hear what happens. I won't spoil it. Okay, so you hear us walking around. And then, and then you'll hear us running downstairs. You hear us running. So basically what that was, was a chair slid across the floor. Do you have any videos or just videos? Unfortunately, I don't have any. We were still setting that up then. Yeah, I said we were still setting up equipment. We were just fortunate enough that my recorder was sitting on a chair. Her recorder is, when, we, when this happened, her recorder is the only thing running the whole building at that time. I meant during the presentation. Oh, unfortunately, no. We don't get hardly any video evidence. Unfortunately, everything is all on audio. I don't know. I don't have it though. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll play it again here. I'm, I should. I, unfortunately, it's not real loud, but it, you can you can definitely hear the chair sliding. And then the other guy goes, "What the freak was that?" And you hear us running downstairs. <laughs> so yeah. <coughs> That was when no one was there. Um, so other one was recaptured not too long after. So after all this happened, we were freaking out. Oh my God, sure, it's like we were, we ran outside of the building to talk to find them to you know talk to them. You know you won't believe what just happened. So when this is recorded, there's no one in the building. There's a female voice talking in the building. There's no one in the building. I'll play I'll play it again. It's real quiet. And unfortunately, we couldn't tell what she's saying. But she said something yeah, like, that's, that's what like I was running at, trying at. Yeah, something. Yeah, unfortunately, it was too garbled for us to make out. But yeah, it's when a, we heard it, it was, I mean, at the normal um, volume and everything, it's pretty clear to hear. Yeah, it's, it was real quiet, though. I think that same night, there was a pool table in that place, and we heard a pool cue falling floor, but there's no pool cue on the floor, and I mean, that place is crazy. All right, so the, this is from George's house, the oh, okay. that, that we were talking about. 
This was the incident that she was talking about, the footsteps walking up, the cell sensor beeping. I'm going to play that for you here.
um, Rock Island. Have you all any number of skeleton men in Rock Island? Yeah, yeah. They do look like a house. Like yeah, it's an old Masonic temple that they converted into a like, event center. They do a, a haunted attraction there. Um, they also do like a murder mystery dinner there also. Um, we went there back in like, 09 or 2010, I think. Um, this one is just flat out creepy. This is a new one that I found on our website that I didn't know was there. I said, fortunately, you can't really make out through the noise, but it's a voice saying, I know your secret. So let me, let's see if you can hear it. I'll play it again. Okay, it's just a few moments. We didn't have the greatest recorders then either, so. <laughs> yeah, so we have cheap equipment, so yeah, fortunately, it's pretty, pretty rough, but. Are you guys hearing this yourself with your own ear, or is no. it only nine, once you go back and exactly? Check yeah, nine out of ten times after we go back and review our we recordings. We have heard things too that you know a voice or something like that, and we'll say like I just heard a voice. We'll hear something out loud also, but yeah, like you said, most of the time is when we're reviewing the audio that you know we'll hear these voices and pick up sounds. <laughs> There's time that the recorders don't actually pick it up what we hear, right. yeah. which is bad. So, unfortunately, this is our last one. Um, this was from the Rock Island House I was telling you about that we were threatened legal action with. Uh, I'll set this one up a little bit. Um, Becky and a couple of our other mm -hmm. female members were in the basement just talking. They had noticed that there was a baby doll sitting in the corner of the basement, away from where they were standing, mm -hmm. and I'll just leave it at that. Okay. That's what it was.
I think the bird this week turned on his Galesburg, maybe, or? Port, Port Madison. Oh, Port Madison, yeah. Did you go down to Port Madison? So the stuff that you guys are hearing or, mm -hmm. or reporting, do you guys believe that maybe like the majority of it is like residual stuff? Or do you think it's actually intelligent like trying to yeah. let you know something? Or, or, or you have a mixture, I suppose, yeah. but is it more one way or the other? Or it's more residual. Um, you know, like that example I gave of asking the age and getting a direct response that seemed appropriate and everything. That's kind of a rarity, but we have gotten recordings that um, have been directly answering our questions, but most of them is just listening to audio. And a lot of times, probably more than 50% of the time, we're we'll going to a place, and that's why I try to normally just start my recording right away. Um, we'll just be doing the conversation like we're doing right now, and then we'll go back and listen to it and find something. So I think it's it, right greater than that, right? Seventy-five percent. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just be not investigators chatting, and we'll catch yeah. up. When I asked Megan before we came here, I said, "Is it you know just because of the age of this building? Has there been any reports of it in here? You know, and it probably would have been a bad idea to just have our recorder going because you just never know. It could be somebody that frequented the library and." liked being here and so decided to come back or whatever so but they haven't had any work so <laughs> uh, I'm not saying two libraries well we have been in some libraries that were haunted yep we have done a couple of investigations of libraries yeah. also you guys work together mm -hmm. we're all like together have you noticed I mean, like are there some people who are like more sensitive that can like hear stuff and then the person mm -hmm. sitting right next to them can't or you know have you ever noticed that sure well, like, well it's, it's funny you bring that up because we had a former member that everything was paranormal to him uh, it's unfortunate it, it, it is kind of funny looking back on it now but some people claim that they see you know shadows everywhere and stuff but we've never really found one person to be more sensitive than another one but we don't use psychics just because we want to use something that we can document and yeah, right. we can prove or disprove. And uh, um, we might say, like, when we go into a room, it's like, well, I feel a little anxious or something. We do listen to our own feelings in that respect. And uh, well, we don't have to determine places. You no, know, you no. Know. Active. So, do you have like a format? <clears throat> in other words, you're talking about the flashlight lighting up for maybe yes or no answers. Mm -hmm. One thing that I watch Ghost Adventures mm -hmm. and you know, they hear one thing and then they go crazy. You know, I mean, you, you've, got like some, that. <laughs> you've got something going, and then you don't you hear that? Yeah, yeah. You know, say, that could be it. You know, if you're if you're if somebody's going to answer a question, you have like a set of questions you want to pursue calmly without without just going. Did you see that? You know, that's yeah. It depends on what the history is of the place and what the client is reporting that they're hearing or experiencing. Like if they say, you know, I'm, we're constantly hearing a little child's voice or something like that. So then our question will be along that lines or, you know, how old are you? Did you used to live here? And, you know, are you missing your family? Or, you know, we'll just kind of kind of base it on what they're saying. When we go into a place like this at Farrar or Edinburgh where it's a public investigation, we're actually paying to go in there because it's considered like a 24-hour investigation. It's not 24 hours, but um, we just kind of go by the history of the building, you know? There's not any really particular reason why Farrar should be haunted, but it seems to be. In case so, anyone's wondering, Farrar is the name of the school house we're going to next week. Yeah, it's in Bondurant. Um, and that's, like I said, another public place that um, you can go into and you pay, you know, some money and you can stay there. All right, so. But yeah, but like if we get a response to our question, we don't freak out and stop the investigation right there. We keep, we keep going. So every once in a while you might hear something, and you said you have seen what you believe is an aberration. Yeah, this place that we're going to um, next week, Farrar, it's an old uh, grade school. And I was upstairs with two other members, um, and we were sitting, just sitting on a desk that was in the classroom and looking out into the hallway because the door was open. And we're just sitting there talking and the one made mention of that it looked like the hallway was getting lighter and darker. And so Diana and I both are kind of looking there and watching and uh, all of a sudden 
myself and this other one, Stephanie, we gasped at the same time. We know we saw the same thing. It's like, oh, you know, and we both described it to each other. I mean, the same thing. It was like a partial apparition. It was like somebody coming into that room. And it startled us so much because we didn't, I think, you know, we thought like, okay, we're going to be stuck in here. But somebody's coming into this room. It, it was just like an outline of a white figure from maybe the mid-torso up. You couldn't see any features or anything like that. It was just like white, the head, the shape of the head, the shoulders. And um, anyway, so we were kind of startled and I called Bryce on the walk and he's like, oh my God, we just saw it sometime. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Get up here because we're afraid to leave the room, you know? And so we have had times that we've gotten startled ourselves, you know? Just because we do this, it doesn't make us no worries. <laughs> Yeah. And, and you know, we do it because we want answers. And I myself personally have had enough experiences or experienced enough things that I do believe that there is an afterlife. That's my belief. I don't know what it is and I you know, I don't know why there's some some places and there isn't at others, but um, you know, it's just like we try to find answers and go from there. Oh I have uh, I don't know. A uh, couple of things and everything. I know someone that uh, said they saw like a couple of white apparitions that were the back of her, so you couldn't make out what they're saying. And then he woke up his wife. I think the dog was started, but woke him up, and and by that time they were gone and everything. But I'm wondering. I always hear a little later and everything. Uh, I'm not familiar with the materials you use uh, to detect things, but are they going to get better? It's hard. It's, it's hard to say because, like I said, it, nothing is designed for ghost hunting because it's all technically theoretical. So you know, they're always trying to do things to try to you know, the presence of the paranormal. I know Ghost Adventures always does crazy stuff with computers and cameras and stuff, but you know, we don't have that kind of money to be able to do stuff like that. We we used the three D um, or not three D. What was it? Um, clear. Clear. Yeah. Thermal. Thermal. Yeah, thermal. 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 You know, to try to see something like that. And, I mean, no, it's just it's just hard to tell. We're limited by the funds we have to get the stuff we do, but I think our absolute best tool that we have is recorders because if we're going to capture something, we're going to get another recorders. We're not normally going to see it in pictures or on videos. Or like that. Do you uh, worry about, do you ever investigate places that are really like the axe murder yeah, the site is, is bad. You, yeah. Are there places that you maybe don't want to go? I, I mean, that place frightened me the one time I was there, not this last time, but the time before, um, myself and uh, another investigator got so frightened, and I don't remember what it was for, but we didn't want to go back in the house unless there was one of the male members with us. We just, you know, it, it can get frightening, and we haven't come across anything demonic or anything that has threatened us or harmed us. There has been some members that have gotten scratches. Um, that guy that was supposed to come tonight had to work, but when we went to Edinburgh, he had um, scratches on his face that it just, I mean, he didn't feel it happened. Diana had um, something that felt like it pinched her ear and actually made, made a red mark. So. Um, other than stuff like that, or we've had, like, felt like we were touched or something. And I was just watching something the other night, this gal was investigating somewhere, and she just said, at the end of it, you know, she said, be careful because you might find what you're looking for. Yeah. 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 Ye
understand. You know what? I have a kind of experience which he was experiencing earlier. I had a, after I come back in the vacation 2014, mm-hmm. it was the end of the, I think, uh, you know, uh, first of the October. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dry light, like the head light, mm-hmm. like a black bluish, like this is here. You know, I used to, you know, scan my house every night when I went to the bed. Mm-hmm. Every night, come from the my house, you know, I was uh, so tired. I couldn't sleep because I normally I'm so really, really good. Mm-hmm. But the dry light scan my house, my bed, and the people <coughs> my house from the there. Oh my God, it's a strange thing that so I was a people girl. Was it from inside or outside? Outside, outside my house. But it's not normal, you know. Yeah, it's happening, it's really, you know, like, you know, friends. Friends. So, after the you see, it goes to continue, you know, right. the life, mm-hmm. it bothers me because it's not like a regular, you know, mm-hmm. like, like, you know, right. <coughs> I will you know, because, you know. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why, after the I end up the emergency. I've never been to the, you know, hospital before. Mm-hmm. You know? But I couldn't swim, I couldn't eat, a lot of things, strange things going on. So I ended up the emergency three times. And then, after a you know, one day, ah, I had a bad experience. Red, you know, red light, like a you know, small lounge, is the target to my head. So I left next to the, my neighborhood, hiding the pier in the tree. But the lights continue to target my head, so I just stood more than one hour. I was uh, trying to be hiding from my head, my eyes, uh, you know, behind the tree. I don't know what it is. Uh, you know, I think this, uh, I thought this gun, gun target, you know, okay. uh, red lights uh, continue to target. Yeah, laser beams. Yeah, yeah laser beams continue to follow me and target me. Mm-hmm. I, it was the uh, October very very cold. I was wearing a house well. Right. I have to survive. So I was praying and I was trying to be here I am, I'm survivable. Mm-hmm. Those kind of things I think is uh, some kind of very Yeah. We don't know. we don't have all the answers. We never will. Um because like say this will probably never be, you know, just solved in my lifetime, our lifetimes. Because like I said, it's always an evolving science. Um, there's no right way or wrong way to do it. So, has anybody else in the book started experiencing them? Start yeah. yeah, I uh, some time ago I took a, a a friend of mine gave me a cat, and I kept it for about two months, and I found out I was allergic to it, so I gave it back to the friend, and uh, about three weeks later, I was laying in bed. I was about to go to sleep, and I felt the cat jump up on my on the bed and lay down between my legs. It's what it felt like, yeah. like it always used to when I had it. I'm like, well, what the heck? And I look out of it, look down, there. ain't no cat here. <laughs> well, I talked to that friend a little while after that, and she had had the cat put to sleep because oh, she couldn't. Oh, yeah, and so here you go. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I was, I, I, when we heard that um, meow at that one investigation, it was always comforting to me because I've had animals that had to put to sleep, and it's like, oh, well, you know, maybe there's an afterlife for them and such. Did you say you've had something? I've had stuff happen my whole life. Now, I was going to ask you, have you ever felt I think they felt. Do you ever think that people are the ones that are haunted instead of the place? The yeah. 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 We've had a couple of cases where we thought that. Like this Rock Island house that he was talking about. Um, one of the daughters so there. Dark, yeah. yeah, she's like preteen, and um, we figured that there was something that was just kind of attracted to her. You know that because she seemed to be a magnet for that to the mm-hmm. So yeah, that that's happened before and. I don't know if we've had anything that has come from objects. You know, you hear about like, oh, so and so got a piano, and now you know they're having activity in their house, and um, you know, I, I guess there's 
things that can come from um, they call it object attachment, you know, and the a spirit of some kind is attached to an object, but I don't think we've experienced anything like that. I have one question. We had a group come to the Curtis Mansion to from the Quad City as a paranormal group come to do an investigation. With great equipment like you're talking about, mm -hmm. one of the things that you haven't mentioned that they mentioned was smells. Have you ever, they had certain rooms where there were smells and it was logical. Mm -hmm. They smelled vinegar in one of the rooms and it was very logical that there would be that fragrance. Have you ever smelled things? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's been a few investigations. The one, um, there was one in Illinois City we did. Yeah, yeah, and then um, when I was going like and just smelled a really, really strong yeah. smell of flowers, and it, it, it was there and then it was gone, just just like that. And um, yeah, we we've, we've had those like phantom smells and stuff like that. Yeah, that was too often. No. Them. Yeah, I had uh, one thing happen. Uh, probably my son, one of these before and everything. I used to go to Spurs' church in town, and there's many graveyards. She was from, I think, Oakwell, uh, anyone or something like that. I can't remember. She, she couldn't pronounce her ages, and she was popular medium, but when they took her to get out of church, she did her yearly predictions on world events and everything. And, and I remember sometimes she died, and I saw them on the other end of the block at 7. This was on 6 at church, so I have a block down. I remember uh, hearing someone, oh yes, she can, just someone kind of like swirling, but I couldn't see who it was. I probably knew it was her. He said, oh yes, she can, she's gone, but I knew it was her for some reason. I don't know, mm -hmm. I just knew it was. Yeah, I think there's it's some people that do have a connection, you know, with, uh, especially if it's maybe a family member or something like that that they've been close to. Um, we don't discount that stuff. We just. Like I said, when we do our investigations, we don't use mediums or psychics or anything like that, simply because we just want it to be scientific. We want something that is tangible that we present to the yeah. clients. I wonder, the, when it's kind of one of the dreams where you're half awake and half asleep, I wonder if that has anything to do with the place, because I saw half a block in the place, I don't know if that happened since, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, the sleep thing, like, oh, I don't know. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, I think one of our clients we thought maybe that had happened because they were saying something about that they woke up and they couldn't move from the hot of the, the bed and felt like they were being held down and stuff like that. So there is a condition called sleep paralysis that can mimic um, those kind of things too. Yeah, I think that's what it's about. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? Yes, sir. This uh, happened to my wife. Uh, right after we were married, uh, about, uh, well, I don't know what the date was, but at any rate, <clears throat> I had been working late on the bridge, I see a toll collector when I wasn't teaching school, and I was just going to bed, and uh, she said, are you out of sleep yet? No, I said, I'm not, and she said, oh, I'm terrified. She said, I think there's someone in the hall, and she was just shaking, she was so frightened. And uh, so I thought, well, I could tell my wife, I grabbed my trusty looter and went out to look. And of course, the hall was empty. And I checked the entire house. And uh, it was all locked up in the whole bit. But she didn't go to sleep, so we set up and took it on. Yeah, it was And I went to sleep. And the first thing on the news the next morning were the spec murders at the Cook County Hospital in Chicago. Now, is this an evidence of paranormal activity or psychic whatever? Mm -hmm. I know it wasn't a two glazed taco, but <laughs> this really happened at a couch She was pretty really terrified. I'm still scared. <laughs> yeah, so you don't even need to do it. Don't expect an explanation. I simply, I would do their comment. Yeah, sometimes you have something like that, it's just for you. Mm -hmm. For quite a while and everything. I mean, I can see as clearly as can be that apparition. You know, the shape of it and everything like that. I could probably draw it out just because it's just stuck in my mind so much. So that was more like a mist or something. No, like it, it wasn't was, like it was like, like a face or something. No, it was like um, 
it was like a white outline of somebody, but the, the body and everything was white. So it was just like, and it sounds silly, but like, like somebody had a sheet on or something <laughs> like that, you yeah. know, but it just, I saw the head, I see the arm, and it, it was just like, only part of it, like it was coming into the room. Oh. And it was just really weird because Stephanie, the one that saw it also, I mean, we were finishing each other's sentence when we were describing it. So we know we saw it the same thing. And it was black at the time, like dark. I yeah, it was, was dark and it appeared white. Yeah, it was dark and hallway, but she had made a comment about how it keeps looking like it's getting dark and white. So I was kind of looking then, and like all of a sudden, you know, the background of the, the hallway is black, and there, there's that, so. And we're going back there next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Any other questions for us? I've got another All right. question. Uh, my uh, class was on a field trip in Duke one time, mm -hmm. and uh, we visited a, an establishment or a location known as the Ham House. Have you ever investigated that in your I've heard, heard of it, but I've never done it. I don't know whether it's a local legend or whether it's just something that would make the kids behave themselves, but uh, <laughs> supposedly there was a violent crime there. and. Uh, it, uh, the, the violent crime was some in house invaders got blown away with a shotgun by one of the sisters that lived there. And I just wonder how much, uh, another thing, how much, uh, and what percentage of uh, the local legends do you find are simply that and uh, have no truth to them or just a large yeah. percentage? Or I mean, just, you know, when we first started out, we did our share going to the uh, cemeteries, you know, just for lack of, you know, having the right to investigate and stuff like that. But um, we haven't really done any legends or anything like that. Our, like I said, almost all of our investigations are ones where people have contacted us, wanting us to come into their home or business, um, along with, you know, these couple that we go every once in a while, these big ones. But um, no, we haven't really, like, Cry baby bridge or anything like that. We haven't tried to disprove anything like that. Have you ever encountered any action on kinetic, uh, physical uh, manifestations? And are you familiar with Borley Rectory in England? Life magazine just spread on that, and during their photographic sequences, a brick of Wajimu rose off the ground. But I just wondered if you, it's supposed to be one of the most haunted places in England. Sounds like a place to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, we've never, I don't think we've really had anything like move like that. No. Um, the house in Rock Island, the one that we got banned about, um, we actually had a radio turn on by itself in the house. Oh, yeah, we were all upstairs and all of a sudden it started playing a song from Greece. Yeah, I, I couldn't run down the stairs, but um, I did. Bryce did, and he was one of the first ones to get into that room and actually saw like a mist or something, and several other ones that got in there after him saw it, so. Yeah, that was, say, that was we, we don't counter kinetic manipulation at all, unfortunately. No. Wish we did. Yeah. Make life more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah. 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 Have any of your tape recordings ever been tampered with by a, a spirit where when you play it back, the voice, you know, if it's going really fast or it's going super slow, it's not the speed that you had it at. We had a past investigator claim that one of her recorders was moved by itself. Um, but we've actually had, um, there's been a couple times where our uh, video cameras have actually been like knocked yeah. by something that couldn't be explained. Um, or battery strain. Or battery strain, yeah. Um, we're digital recorders, I don't, I, I mean, we haven't been able to see anything or hear anything to change the speed or hey, one of the we investigated our small island a long time ago and that was one of the places where the camera was by itself and something was not it almost knocked completely over. So it, it it's happened, it just it's very, very rare that it happens like that. Have you actually used the Kinex camera like the ones in the Xboxes? So unfortunately no, we don't have that um, the money or the technology to It'd be neat. It'd be neat, yeah. yeah. Like those things do the um, I forget what the what fancy word they call it, but Yes, unfortunately, we don't have the resources to be able to use something like that. We'd love to, but. Yeah. Okay, okay well, I think we're going to go ahead and conclude it. And if anybody um, wants, like I said, if anybody would like to contact us or 
you want to copy down on our website and um, get a hold of us, we love to do the investigation. Yes, and if you want to talk more about our equipment or play with it, it's all right here for you as well. Thank you. 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 Thank you.